Dear sisters, and I am sure there's some brothers watching this also, um, Sister Scott had asked me to record a lesson given um, out of one of the April 2020 conferences uh, reports. And this one that was chosen was A Perfect Brightness of Hope by Elder Jeffrey R. Holland, which happens to be my very favorite subject. The word of hope, it just has so much weight to it. Um, I, I just, I, I can't imagine life without having some hope of some kind. But in there, he talks of uh, President Nelson's invitation for us to look back 200 years to the restoration of the gospel. And in looking back, he also said, we can see the majesty of God's hand in the restoring of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, Elder Holland and his wife, they um, decided that they would, in their imaginations, go back to 1820, and they would try to think what it was like and what they were thinking about. The questions they had was, what was missing here? What do we wish we had? And uh, what do we hope God will provide in response to our spiritual longing? Now, I can't imagine quite fully that that I could think of what it was like in 1800s, um, but I can read back. I can read back in my uh, ancestors' diaries and their journals, and I can be kind of lost in, in what they had to uh, experience at the time, and maybe the questions that they had. So I, I encourage each of you to look back, and if you have those available to you, look back in their diaries and their journals, and, and just imagine what it was like now we have it today we we don't have to search for it we have the restoration of the gospel so we don't experience those same things but this this is just thinking back on what they probably would have been thinking at the time now he also quotes um a phrase by william ellery channing and, and apparently this this was a, a prominent religious figure of the day and he states that we would have looked for the parental character of God, which Channing considered the first great doctrine of Christianity. Such a doctrine would have been recognized deity, would have recognized deity as a caring father in heaven, rather than a harsh judge dispensing stern justice, or an absentee landlord who had once been engaged in earthly matters, but was now preoccupied somewhere else in the universe. So, our hopes in 1820, as he states, would have been to find God speaking and guiding as openly and as present as he did in the past, a true father. And as I pray in the evenings or mornings or during the day, I try to think of him as just that. He is my father and I am speaking to him as if he were my father. Um, I, don't, I don't find him to be this somewhere out there kind of being. I'm grateful that I do have that knowledge that he did. He does live and that he is a part of my life and he lo does listen to me. Um, he also said that had we lived in the first years of the 19th century, would, we would have realized that with great alarm that doubts about the reality of the Savior's life and resurrection were beginning to take significant hold within Christendom. We're experiencing that now, today. So our testimonies, our strength, our hope needs to be strong. We would have hoped for evidence to come to the whole world that would confirm the biblical witness that Jesus is the Christ, the literal Son of God. And we would have had lots of hopes, but in those hopes, I've written down a few things. And um, so our 1820 hopes, they would have been a hope for evidence to confirm that Jesus is the Christ scriptural evidence of that and in that it would be another testament of Christ one that testified of his miracle miraculous birth his ministry and his atoning sacrifice and his glorious resurrection maybe some of the other hopes would have been to find someone authorized by God with the true priesthood to baptize to bestow the gift of the Holy Ghost to administer all gospel ordinances necessary for salvation. Another hope would be to see promises fulfilled regarding the return of holy temples with the spirit, ordinances, power,
power and authority to teach eternal truths, heal personal wounds, and bind families together forever. We would have been, in 1820, these would have been our hopes. These would have been things that we would have wanted to experience and have in our life. Now, jumping ahead, um, and you can read, you can read more in his talk. I'm only going to paraphrase just a few areas. But jumping ahead, we have, um, we have all of these things. We have been blessed by having all of these things in our lives, and we have enjoyed them. He also states that our, our 1820 list of hopes could go on and on, which they could. Um, just as today, we have hopes that could go on and on. But perhaps the most important message of the Restoration is that such hopes would not have been in vain. Beginning in the Sacred Grove and continuing to this day, these desires began, began to be clothed in reality and became, as the Apostle Paul and others taught, true anchors to the soul, sure and steadfast. What was once only hoped for has now become history. It is our history. These are things that are true anchors to our soul, sure and steadfast. And in these times of COVID-19 and the other challenges that we are facing, we need to hold steadfast to all of these things. Now, in response to what we're experiencing today, because then he jumps ahead and he, he now wants to think of what's now, what's ahead of us. And he says, um, there's also a, a kind of a promise. And he said, when we have conquered this, now he's talking about the COVID-19 and what's happening right now. And we will. May we be equally committed to freeing the world from the virus of hunger, freeing neighborhoods and nations from the virus of poverty. May we hope for schools where students are taught, not terrified they will be shot, and for the gift of personal dignity for every child of God, unmarred by any form of racial, ethnic, or religious prejudice. Now, look, the greatest of hopes would be the two commandments, to love God by keeping his counsel and to love our neighbors by showing kindness and compassion and patience and forgiveness. These are divine directives that are still today very important and forever will be. He talks of the hopes of not only just global desires, but also our personal hopes and the things that we are struggling with, each one of us, in differing ways. Um, and I'm not even going to go into the list of things that we could be suffering from. Each one of us is suffering maybe from something specific to each one of us. And, and I pray that you have hope in the gospel of Jesus Christ and in our Savior. In that, he said, if so many of our 1820 hopes could begin to be fulfilled with a flash of divine light to a mere boy kneeling in a patch of trees in upstate New York, why should we not hope that the righteous desires and Christ-like yearnings can still be marvelously, miraculously answered by the God of all hope? We all need to believe that what we desire in righteousness can someday, some way, somehow, yet be ours. We still have hope. And just as we're feeling a little bit, uh, as he says, our backs to the wall, and the hymn says, other helpers fail and comforts flee. Among our most indispensable virtues will be the precious gift of hope linked inextricably to our faith in God and our charity to others. That is a promise and a blessing in our lives is to have that kind of hope, to have the gospel of Jesus Christ restored today so that we can enjoy all of these things. And in return, we can share them with others who don't quite have it yet or maybe who have fallen away. He states in there um, a quote by a young return missionary, um, a sister missionary from Johannesburg. And she states, we did not come this far only to come this far. We have come a long way in 200 years. The gospel has come a long way in 200 years. And I am ever so grateful. He, he then talks about um, Nephi and the scripture where 
uh, he is challenging us and he puts in his little places so when you read this scripture you're gonna find some of the things that aren't in there but he states my beloved brethren and sisters after ye have received the first fruits of the restoration which is his addition I would ask if all is done behold I say unto you nay ye must press forward with a steadfastness in Christ having a perfect brightness of hope and a love of God and of all men if ye shall saith the Father, ye shall have eternal life, which is the greatest of hope that we can have. May I end with his, his testimony and then um, add it to mine. He states, may we press forward with love in our hearts, walking in the brightness of hope that lights the path of holy anticipation we have been on for now 200 years. I testify that the future is going to be as miracle-filled and bountifully blessed as the past has been. We have every reason to hope for blessings even greater than those we have already received because this is the work of Almighty God. This is the church of continuing revelation. This is the gospel of Christ's unlimited but grace and benevolence. I could not say this any better myself could not add my testimony any stronger. I know this to be true. And remember, hope smiles brightly before us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.